I told you we would be back with news from California and here is news from California. This is a big deal. This is the United States Senate primary in California. I'm not describing which party's primary this is, it's because, and that's because parties aren't, uh, primaries aren't done by party in California anymore. No matter what party you are in, if you place as one of the top two candidates in the same primary in which everybody runs, uh, the top two candidates will advance to the general election in November. Right now, uh, Decision Desk tells us that NBC News can project that one of the two candidates that will advance to the general election in November will be Adam Schiff, current California congressman, uh, former chair of the Intelligence Committee, major, major player in, in Trump impeachments and investigations. Um, Adam Schiff will be in the general election. The question is who will be there with him, by which I mean against him. Um, Congressman Schiff has spent campaign funds and energy and attention trying effectively to elevate Republican Steve Garvey, calculating that there's no chance any Republican can win in a statewide election in California. Um, he'd rather run against a Republican who he's got much stronger differences with than run against fellow Democrats like well-known Democratic members of Congress, Katie Porter and Barbara Lee, who are also in the race. Now the question is, between Garvey, Porter and Lee, which one of them is going to be joining uh, Congressman Schiff this fall in the general? Um, Steve, we're absorbing that call. That's, that's interesting and important in the California Senate primary. Can you tell us anything about how we learned that or what else we should be watching for in terms of who's going to get that number two slot? Yeah, I mean, like I said, it comes in pretty fast and furious this hour in California. And, and what's clear is, first of all, I mean, just look, the margin here for shift of 17 percent of the statewide vote is now counted in California. And, and look at that margin for shift. It's almost 80,000 votes ahead of Steve Garvey. But also look at the distance between Schiff and Katie Porter, or for that or Steve Garvey and Katie Porter. She's sitting there in third place, but at 189,000 votes. That's about 250,000 votes that Porter now lags behind Adam Schiff. And you go further down, there's Barbara Lee at 78,000. You know, she's about 350,000 votes behind Adam Schiff. It's right now the geographical breadth of that strong Schiff performance because California is such a big state, some very distinct regions. But I mean, just start here in Southern California. We showed you Orange County to start the night. This is where Katie, you know, we're not sure if this is. Katie Porter's, how much of Katie Porter's district is here, but her district is based in part in Orange County, and their shift leading her there even in what should be Katie Porter's really best part of the state. Uh, and we're waiting on Los Angeles County, as you just heard from that, uh, that report from Gotti. Uh, you get into shift country there potentially, but let's see, that's going to be a huge uh, chunk of vote that comes out. But then just start working your way up the coast here. San Luis Obispo County, more than half the vote shift leads there. Garvey second. Look how far back it is to Katie Porter. Go into the Central Valley here. It's more Republican friendly area, but just start working your way through. You'll see Garvey leading. You'll see Schiff in second, distance to Katie Porter. Let's go to Fresno County. Garvey leading, Schiff in second, 20 points back to Katie Porter. So just working all the way through the Central Valley here, and that pattern remains. Now let's work our way into the Bay Area here. You start, here's Contra Costa County. 36% of the vote is in. Schiff running in first there, very Democratic area, but Garvey corralling what Republican vote there is, far back to Katie Porter. So you know, a Southern California based congressman, Adam Schiff. Now we're up into the Bay Area. There is a Bay Area congresswoman in this race, Barbara Lee. Just going to ask, yeah. Lagging far behind here. Look, Solano County, 40% Schiff, 12% Porter. There's Barbara Lee at 10%. Um, you know, we're waiting here. Very small. We don't have anything from San Francisco County yet. That will be big in this area. We don't have anything from San Mateo County here, but you can zoom in. Look, just across uh, from San Francisco, Marin County, very up upscale uh, area here. Schiff, big advantage. Far, far back to Katie Porter, though, again. So you just see this everywhere you're looking here, even when you go into the, the uh, Sierra Nevadas here. You know, take a look at Placer County. We show you get a more Republican friendly area here, but look at the distance between Schiff and Katie Porter. El Dorado County. I mean, same story everywhere here and even get up to the very Republican areas in the far, far north of the state here. And again, you expect Garvey to do very well here. But even there, Schiff, it's distant, but Schiff second. And you just don't see the other two Democratic members of Congress. So again, now a quarter of the vote is in statewide. 
This lead that Schiff, and, and, oh, well, there it is, you I've see the second I've got to interrupt you, Steve. Sorry. Um, NBC News has now made a projection as to who the second candidate will be in the November general election uh, against Adam Schiff, and it will be Republican Steve Garvey, the baseball player who hasn't run much of a campaign at all, it was elevated within the Republican field, such as it is, by Adam Schiff, effectively singling him out as the candidate that he most wanted to run against in the November election. NBC now now projects that the two top finishing candidates in the nonpartisan U.S. Senate primary in California will indeed be Adam Schiff uh, and Steve Garvey. Just a remarkable uh, result there. Steve, I, I don't want to let you go uh, too far away from what you were just doing, and I have a special request if you don't mind. Um, in the Bay Area, just east of the San Francisco Bay, Alameda County, that's the county where Barbara Lee is, would consider to be her home base, and I'm just wondering, yep. yeah, I was wondering if she was coming in second there um, to Adam Schiff. She's a Alameda County Congresswoman and beloved um, at home. Again, part of the tragedy here for Democrats is to have powerhouse, well-known, veteran, effective members of Congress like Barbara Lee and Katie Porter now not only not going to be on the ballot in the general election for this Senate seat, but out of the House of Representatives having to give up their House seats in order to, to make this run that turned out to not be successful. You know, in these, in, this is somewhat true in New York as well. You get these real traffic jams mm -hmm. uh, in, in the sort of... Um, progression of, of democratic careers because yeah. you've got states where the when you get elected statewide office you stick around a while in a state like in new york california and there's not a lot of opportunities for opening so people really jump at it when they when they happen if the description that we've been giving tonight about what adam schiff did here picking sort of who he, who he considers, I think, to be an unelectable Republican candidate to elevate during the primary to try to get that Republican into the general election. If that strategy sounds familiar to you, yes. it's because <laughs> you know the former Democratic senator from Missouri, Claire McCaskill, who famously pulled off that caper in one of her own successful bids for the United States Senate. She joins us now along with Obama White House Communications Director uh, Jen Palmieri. Both of these women are co-hosts of the MSNBC podcast. How to Win 2024, and they both know how. Um, Claire, I have to go to you first. You have been invoked. Um, I imagine that you are you, you are cognizant here of the scheme that is at work that appears to be paying off tonight in California for Congressman Adam Schiff. Yeah, I mean, what Adam Schiff did was just plain smart. Uh, there's nothing evil about it. Um, he knew that Garvey was the preferred opponent. For one thing, it's no fun to ta attack Democrats. A little bit different than my situation. Um, in fact, it's relatively risk-free for the values, I think, that all three of the Democratic candidates in this race shared. Because I think now we can safely call him just about almost Senator Adam Schiff. Hmm. And that's a good thing for California, and it's a good thing for America. Uh, it's The sad thing, as you guys have mentioned, is we had three good candidates here, three great members of Congress, and that's always tough. Yeah, and I, I want to know what the future is for Katie Porter and for Barbara Lee, because I want, I, they're both such good communicators in particular mm -hmm. about Democratic values, two totally different ca types of candidates and campaigners and politicians and legislators and lawmakers and leaders, very different in their personality and presentation, but both, I would say, remarkably effective communicators, uh, especially on, on core values issues. And so I hope that Katie Porter and Barbara Lee are around Democratic politics for a long time. Uh, Jen, let me, let me go to you in terms of, uh, both this California Senate result, which we're just getting right now, but also what you've been watching over the course of the night. I mean, it's a, that is a very big win by Adam Schiff. That's a big number. It happened It happened quickly. I mean, it's an inter it's interesting thing. Uh, this will be the first time in over 30 years that a white man will represent California in the United States Senate. Right? <laughs> we had Dianne Feinstein and Barbara Boxer in for a long time, Kamala Harris, uh, Kevin DeLeon now. So, um, that's a big deal. Um, and then overall, just overall, when I look at the exit polls, and um, particularly it was in uh, California, Virginia, North Carolina, around 35, 36 percent of Republicans, people voting in the Republican primary, saying they're not willing to, uh, to guarantee that they will support the Republican nominee. You know, that tells me 
Trump still has a problem consolidating his support. And it's interesting because, you know, the, if let's, let's assume the New York Times poll from the other day was correct. That said that Trump was getting 93 percent of the vote that he had in 2020, yet still people voting, you know, somewhere between 20 and 40 percent of people voting in the Republican primary are not voting for him. So who are those people? You know, maybe they're independents, but they're people that are open to voting for Joe Biden. So I feel I'm coming out of this sort of primary season feeling more optimistic about Biden's room to grow and Trump hitting some kind of ceiling. <clears throat> Jen, I have to I have to give you the opportunity to say California Senator Alex Padilla because Kevin DeLeon <laughs> oh, no. ran yes, for it but oh didn't get gosh, it. Thank, thank you. you. Thank yes. you so much, Senator Alex Padilla. Yes, I knew you would want to he say that. Was, and I wanted to give you a yes. chance before we got too yes. far down the road. Oh, that's um, so nice of you.